What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here and it's time to put Spyro into Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo Switch. We have lots to get through, moves, music, and more, so let's not waste any time. Now Spyro's standard attacks are pretty easy, just take his brawling and hack and slash moves from the Legends games. Or if you want to be more specific, um, Dragon Kata. But his special attacks are where it gets interesting. Now one might think his standard special should be his fire breath while his side special is his charge, but I switched them around, and here's why. In the Spyro games, there are different levels of charging power, and it's pretty hard to control yourself while you're charging, so the standard special would allow you to charge your charge attack. You'd be able to build up your power over a short period of time and ram into your foes. Now, the side special should be his Dragon Breath, with different elements cycling depending on when you use it. Fire would do regular damage, ice would freeze them, lightning would zap them, and bubbles would blow them. And I figured to have it as the side special because in the Spyro games, Spyro is actually capable of walking while breathing fire. He doesn't need to hold still. So you can easily do that in Smash. Just have him walk around the stage and shoot fire out. And his up special would be flight. Whoa, no surprises here. Ha, ah, diddly diddly daddly. Whoa, whoa, ha ha. Okay, let's get to his down special. Spyro's down special would be to send out sparks. In the Spyro games, or the original trilogy at least, sparks would always gather nearby gems for you, flying out and pulling them towards you. So in Super Smash Bros, I figured he could do the same for items. Not just pulling them towards you, but literally giving them to you. It'd be like a long range item grab. There's not much you could do for Spyro in terms of alternate costumes, so you could just switch the colors of his skin, possibly referencing some other things in his franchise. You could reference Sparks' different dragonfly colors, you could reference Cinder with the dark purple one, just pretty simple stuff like that. Speaking of Cinder though, Spyro's final smash could also be a reference to the Legends games in the form of Dark Spyro. He'd soar high up in the air and breathe a gigantic convexity beam down at his foes on the stage. Perhaps he'd even use a bit of his magic to draw in his enemies towards the beam so they couldn't dodge so easily. When it comes to stages, I'm a little biased towards the very first game, so I'm sure there's lots of others, but I chose Nasty Nork's Treasure Vault and Lofty Castle. Mainly because of the vault's tall platforms, it'd be a really fun stage to wall jump on, and the huge gaps in between platforms in the Lofty Castle stage would be really fun to jump across. Imagine how satisfying it would be to meteor smash your enemies into the pit between two platforms as you're jumping across towards each other. For assist trophies, we have Nasty Nork first. Now just like in the game, he likes to run away, so he'd be super fast as he dashes towards your foes, slams them with his magic club, or freezes them into solid blocks of ice. Then you have Hunter, who would be a bit more subtle. He'd leap across the stage with his fancy acrobatics and fire arrows at his foes. But the twist to him is, you can hit him just like a regular fighter, even smash attack him off the side of the stage into the blast zone. First up on our item list is the sheep. Now in the Spyro games, killing these sheep would release a butterfly that would heal your dragonfly companion, Sparks. So in Super Smash Bros, I figured it could be like a smash ball, but for healing. So basically, you just murder that sheep until you can get that butterfly for yourself. Now the second item is pretty unique, only appearing in coin battles. It would be a chest from the Spyro games, filled with a bunch of gems that are worth tons of coins. So you'll likely get put in first place if you're the one that smashes it open and collects all the loot inside. And the last item would be the Dragon Egg Thief from the first Spyro game. It would be one of those items like the Sandbag or Smash Ball that you can't exactly grab, just hit. But basically he'd scoot along the stage at incredible speed, snatching up any items he can get his hands on. So you have to defeat him in order to take them back. The best strategy would be to wait until he gets a ton of stuff and then hit him so you can get all that for yourself. Pretty cool ideas, huh? But I think it's about time to end it. To finish off this video, I'll show you the 8 pieces of music that I think would fit Spyro the best in Super Smash Bros, and you may want to stay tuned for that because afterwards, I'll show you who's next.